Hi, I'm Jeff King. Uh, I just wanted to go over what uh, a scale unit is and why it's important uh, when you're building an application for the cloud. Um, so scale unit is a, kind of a unit of resources that you can scale. That sounds pretty simple, um, but it's actually fairly challenging uh, to achieve and it takes quite a bit of testing to really figure out what your scale unit would look like. So I'm just going to draw a really simple application um, just to kind of describe um, how you would achieve finding uh, what your scale unit is. So if we look at like a website um, that interacts with a data store, um, again this is completely generic as well as this. These can be um, really whatever technologies you want. The idea being here though this is a web server um, and so I mean we kind of understand what a web server is and then this is your data tier. Um, we kind of understand what that means. So persistent data and a scalable web front end. So um, when you're looking at this in terms of like scalability, you might think that you can just scale that web tier, um, you know, to you know one million resort, one million servers, right? Um, and you can in a cloud, right? But that is not going to end up being a good user experience because there is a point at which um, you will have so many web servers that your database you know won't be able to fulfill the requests um, in this kind of like huge number scenario um, they might not even be able to connect to the database at some point because all the connections are used up um, so things like that you definitely have to take into account right and so that's why it's really um, interesting to come up with what your what your scale unit looks like um, so it's usually a mixture of your data tier as well as say your web tier um, so you might find that um, you can have, and this could be a quite a large number, but you can say like 100 web servers um, and have a data tier that's able to facilitate um, requests from 100 web servers. Um, so just to put that over top, just they're all running in parallel, they're all interacting with the data store. So now that you've found that this um, mixture is kind of the 100 to 1 ratio, um, I would just kind of cap that as a boundary um, and then that becomes your scale unit. So now what do you, to, to even find this metrics, first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be like load testing your application um, and you're going to need to use a load testing suite like Visual Studio Online um, which can really like hammer your resources and get you um, these numbers teased out. Really the teasing of these numbers uh, would be when your performance really deteriorates. So that would be kind of like where you draw the line in the sand and then that would dictate what these numbers are. Now, once you have these numbers, you get a sense of what you have to do in terms of you know, meeting the client demand past that. So um, to meet the client demand past that, once you have your application built like that, you'd be looking at creating an entirely separate environment um, with, you know, like the same resources, potentially the same number of resources as well. Well, that would give you like a doubling. Um, so once you have, once you know you can duplicate your system, um, you can put these in two different data centers and theoretically you can route your traffic to it uh, depending on where the user is. So this is a really simple way um, to, to achieve scale past your scale unit, um, but it's really important to know what your scale is, what the boundary is, so like this is like the number of requests per second in this case, um, and then you know what are those max numbers and what's the relationship there. Once you have all that information, you can still scale beyond that, um, it just becomes a very different picture. Um, so it's good to know these boundaries. I hope that was uh, informative, please leave comments below.